Hello my dear friends, today we'll be making some Harry Potter potions from the Miniverse series. Now, as usual, I'll be trying to make these different from what they show us, but we'll see how that will turn out. Either way, you'll probably learn a few new things from my mistakes or successes, and I hope I can at least inspire you to be creative and make your own miniatures a little different. Oh, and the little Harry Potter blind bags I just opened were purchased as decor for the background, but they are pretty cool. So inside this capsule you get a wooden looking table, which you get in each capsule. And by the way, for those of you that have not seen my shorts, the cool thing about these capsules is that they turn into this, um, what is it called, a beaker? And then once you finish your creation, the table snaps back in there and this is how you can store or display your miniature. So the first potion we're going to be making today is the Polyjuice, which if I'm not mistaken, I think it's that potion that allows you to transform or take the shape of someone else for a few minutes. So with this kit, you get a tag and some cord, a little wooden crate for all your supplies, two little containers with two of the ingredients that we need, the container for the actual potion with the cork, the usual miniverse tweezers, a little plastic funnel, the cauldron, which contains our resin. I was going to say this is a tripod, but I think it's called something else. Um, it's the little thing that holds your beaker kind of like that, but I don't know exactly what you call it. And then last but not least, I think this is a ladle, but it might be something else. It's basically a little thing to kind of like scoop the potion from there and pour it into this. I mean, through the funnel, obviously. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is tie the rope and add the tag to this little container. What I'm gonna try to achieve here is going to be quite complicated, and I really hope it does come out okay. It sounds very good on paper, but I'm sure I'm gonna encounter some difficulties and some options obstacles, but hopefully we can overcome them and think outside the box. Alright, so far so good. Maybe I should have added a little bit less rope, but for what I'm trying to do, I think it's good to add a little bit more and cover that part. Now this might sound crazy, but what I'm trying to do next is actually glue this container to the actual tripod or stand. And I'm thinking about using some super glue because I need it to hold really strong. So we're going to try that, but if it's not working for some reason, then we're just going to either use some hot glue or maybe even resin. I think something is wrong with my super glue. Maybe it expired or something. I don't even know if super glue can expire, but it shouldn't be like this, right? It looks very stringy and very, I don't know, like rubbery. So I guess that method is out the window. I'm not going to use this and ruin it. I do however want it to be glued there properly so instead of resin I'll just use the hot glue gun and be very careful not to add too much to it but even if I do this will be the back of the miniature so it won't be too bad. I just realized right now instead of putting it here on the top I could have went through the bottom part so then it really would have been hidden but oh well it's too late now so Learn from my mistake, and if you want to do the same, just put it underneath here. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is actually glue this entire thing to the table. That worked super smoothly. We'll just have to wait and see if um, it's going to be okay for what I need it to be. I know that didn't make too much sense, but it will in a little while. So while this is hardening, we're going to take our resin out and I'm going to need a lot more than it's in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to empty it in a different little container. And I know this has a different color and adding my own clear resin will change that, but hopefully I can match it and get it as close as possible. Right, so I think we've gathered about as much as we can from this cauldron. I'm just gonna use this little silicone uh, spatula spoon thingy to make sure we get every last drop, which is non-existent because we got everything. So then this is kind of like a teal collar and I'm pretty sure we can replicate it. So I'm gonna add more clear resin to this. All right, I think that should be enough. I just wanna make sure I have more than I need because if I don't have as much as I need, then that's a problem. And to this, I'm gonna add one drop of grass green and then one drop of peacock blue. And then we're gonna mix it all in nicely. I think I'm gonna add one more drop of each of those colors because it's a little bit too clear. That is already much better and much closer to what it was originally. Thank you. 
Okay, let's put this to the side for now. All right, and then back to this little container for our potion. I'm just gonna remove the cork. We're gonna add this fluffy thing looking, I don't know, it kind of looks like troll hair, like from Trolls, from the movie Trolls. I really don't know what it is exactly, even though I watched Harry Potter. I mean, again, just like with Lord of the Rings, it's been a while and I don't even know if they were that explicit about, you know, what these things are. So let's get a generous amount. I want there to be a nice little contrast in there with all the other things. Maybe like this much. That is very, I don't know, flaky. It kind of like breaks apart and goes everywhere. I think we can add a little bit more. This one I'm gonna make it into kind of like a ball shape if I can. Okay, that's too much of a ball. Let's kind of like break it apart a little bit. Kind of like that. All right, that's good for now. We're going back to the resin and I'm gonna add these, I don't even know what they are. They're like kind of fluffy, but at the same time, you know what? Honestly, to me, first time I saw them, they kind of looked like viruses. Like literally just Google a picture of a virus and this is almost identical. And I also have a couple extra of those. So I'm gonna have them ready in case we need to put, you know, more in case they sink to the bottom of that container. So now we're gonna use the little funnel and just pour some in there. I'm gonna try to get some of those virus looking things in first and then also save a couple so that they can be more towards the top. Okay, so far so good. Let's just have a look and see exactly how it is. All right, maybe I added a little bit too much of that fluff, but I'm gonna try to move it around just so it's not all in one place. Okay, let's make sure those floaty things are looking nice. Yep, I like that. They're a little bit bunched together over there, but I'm gonna try to move them. Okay, that looks very good, I like it. So let's set it in place real quick. I'd say that looks pretty darn good. Now for the hard and complicated part. What I'm gonna do is take this cauldron that had the resin in and I'm gonna clean it up and then I'm gonna take this um, glue from here off. And why exactly am I doing that it is going to make sense in just a little bit. The cauldron is now squeaky clean and in case I didn't mention it before I started cleaning it, the way to do it is with some rubbing alcohol and then you just kind of like work your way in there with a little spatula or something and then you wipe it clean and then you do it again and again and again until it's nice and clean. And now to get rid of this plastic from the cap, I'm just gonna kind of like sand it down until, you know, everything is gone and we just have plastic. I got something like this. Now all I need to do is wipe off this plastic residue and we got ourselves a nice looking, perfectly clean cauldron that we can use. So here comes the tricky bit. I'm going to cut a piece out of this mini brand series four tube because what I'm trying to do here is make it so that, you know, the cauldron pours the potion in the little container. And I think using this clear plastic to kind of like cut off a shape of what we would like it to look and then stick it to both ends might actually work. Of course, after after that I'm gonna have to paint the resin on it but hopefully everything works fine. We're gonna have to keep on testing and cutting and testing and cutting until we get exactly what we want so let's keep on doing that because I don't want it to be too far from the thing you know because then it's not gonna look that great. But I think this is a very good distance right here right? Okay I like the way that looks. Now I think first we're gonna just stick it to the cauldron and I'm thinking about just dumping some uh, hot glue in there all the way at the bottom. Now another thing I want to do is bend this plastic and stick it to the cauldron so that, you know, it takes that form, that shape, that round shape. Alright, so far so good. Everything worked as planned. Now what we're gonna have to do is put some resin inside this container and then decide on what position do we want this cauldron to be in, right? And then cure the resin in there, so let's do that. But first, I think we need a little bit more um, space to work with, so I'm going to remove this bottom part of the table. That's much better. Well, let's just pour a little bit of resin, not too much. 
Okay, that should be good. And then we're going to decide the angle of this. Probably something like this. Yeah, I think that's good, right? Okay, now let's use the UV light. Right now I'm going to need the help of one of these assisting arms so that we can keep this in the position we want it to until we paint a coat of resin on that little plastic. Maybe let's try to get it a little bit lower. We're kind of like at an angle. There we go. Okay, well, that's much better. So basically right now we're just going to keep adding layers of resin on this little piece of plastic and then curing it and adding more and curing it again until we get it to look exactly as we want. I think that's pretty much it for now and even though I might ruin a good thing I have here I do want to add a couple of these um, viruses as I like to call them and hopefully that will work out and if it doesn't work at the very least you're gonna know what you shouldn't do or shouldn't add. And now for the moment of truth, which to be honest with you is kind of nerve wracking. Let's see if once we remove this helping hand if the cauldron will actually stay upright. It does. It actually worked. I am incredibly surprised that it actually worked. I had a feeling that it might, but at the same time I also had my doubts. But no, it actually works. It holds pretty nicely. Now there is one more thing in particular that I would like to do, but I don't know yet if I'm gonna do it, but I want to see how we would look first. So I bought these fairy tale wings from Hobby Lobby and I'm really curious if maybe we can kind of like attach them to the cauldron since the cauldron is levitating, right? Let's just assume that no one is holding the actual cauldron but it's actually flying. I'm not sure I'm going to attach them but I want to remove them from this package and kind of like place them to see how it would look and then if it actually looks good we're going to attach them. Alright, so technically it would probably be something like this. What do you guys think? Should I? Should I not? Or should I put them like this? I mean, I guess technically, because if the cauldron is staying upright, this is how the wings would be. Whereas this would mean that the wings are actually pointing the wrong direction. Even though I know since this is where the handle is, one wing should be here and the other one should probably be on the other side, but I don't think that will look too good. Yeah, no. I know it's not gonna be natural, but I think the best way to do it is like this. You know what? I'm gonna do it. Aren't I the one that always preaches like, hey, make it different, make it your own. And my gut feeling is telling me that this is how I should make it, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna listen to it. And if you guys want to make it like I did and you don't like this, you know, last edition with the wings, then just don't add it. I just want to first remove these little rings. I'm actually thinking about bending that little part over there just so it attaches better to the cauldron and at the same time you know we also hide that little hole so let's see this one will go kind of like here so we're gonna bend it this way and then this one will go over here actually I probably should have bent it the other way so that when we put the resin it's behind it so let's just turn it the other way yep that's much better and then this one since it goes over here it's gonna be bent that way okay a little bit of Clear resin will be poured in this little cup. Actually, I think I might put it over here so that I don't accidentally harden it with the UV light. This is gonna be a very weird position because I only have two hands. I'm gonna try it like this. Well, that worked. Let's see, does it look good? Oh yeah. I think I'll add just a little bit more resin to this side here just to make sure it sticks properly and to be honest also so that it looks you know a little bit more filled and a little bit more part of the cauldron and I know there's a lot more I could do to it like after this I could probably like paint the whole thing so that the wing is not as shiny paint the resin but you get the gist of what I'm trying to do here all right now it's time for this other wing which will go right over here
All right, that worked quite well. I'm just gonna add once again a little bit more resin here to the wing to make sure it sticks properly. There's only one more little thing left to do, which is to, I guess, add my signature to it, which is going to be GBK, which also, if you follow me for a while, you know it stands for Golden Boy Colleen, or in a more simple way, it's the initials of my YouTube channel. Now, I know this probably should have been the first step I do, but I forgot. So I guess better late than never. All right, so after a couple of hours of hard work, this is the final result, and I'm quite pleased. I think it turned out pretty good and I already have quite a few ideas of how I can slightly improve this next time. I hope you learned something new from seeing me do this and I'm looking forward to see what you guys think in the comments. Also, I know I removed the legs from the table and while I will put them back when I store these, I'm not going to put it back right now because the cauldron part would be out of the frame and you won't be able to see the whole thing. Now, allow me a couple of minutes to clean my set and get ready for the next one. By the way, thank you for coming through with all the comments for the short I made on the series. I was asking you how I can make them differently and all of your suggestions combined with my own ideas is what inspired me to make things like these. So in this capsule we got the armadillo bile and it comes with the good old cauldron which contains our resin and I'm noticing this is a little bit different because it's smooth or as opposed to this one, see it has these little ridges over here, so that's quite interesting. We also have a golden mortar and pestle, I'm guessing this is a mix in Spoon. We got our container for this potion with a little cork. And by the way, I think this container looks very, very cool. Then we got the usual little plastic funnel. This is... I was wondering for a second what is this, but it's that part to make the capsule into a little container to hold your potion. And last but not least, we have a couple ingredients to make this armadillo bile. And I had a quick look at the collector's guide, and this particular one will have to be put in the mortar and pestle, and it will turn into dust, which will then get added to the resin, while these are some golden little beads that will just float throughout the resin. Or, sorry, throughout the potion. Now, here's the deal. In Harry Potter, the armadillo bile is technically a highly corrosive substance. Knowing that, and combined with a few of your suggestions, I know exactly what to do with this one. But first, let's make the potion slash resin combination, and I'm going to make double the portion because I might need it, and also because I have a duplicate of this anyway. I opened this capsule a while ago just to see what they're all about, but I never actually built it, so I have these extra ingredients. I'm not going to use all of them because I might need props for what I'm about to make. So we're just going to use a couple from the other one, plus whatever we have from the first one. I think it should be enough. Unless I'm wasting all of it by dropping it down. All right, I'm going to bring the other table, which by the way, do you guys like it? I think it looks so cool for this type of project, you know, for doing the potions, the Harry Potter stuff. I think it's absolutely perfect for that. The resin in these cauldrons seem to be very, very difficult to get out, so I'm just gonna use this. I'm not even gonna try. This time around, I do not need the cauldron like last time, so let's pour it all in here. I thought it's clear resin, but apparently not. It's like a orangey, very light orange type of color. And no, I do not have patience to wait here until it's all poured out, especially because I need to open the other one. What I'm gonna do is use one of these helping extra hands to hold it for me. Now I can open this other one. Now let me see if there's a way to use two of these helping hands. It's gonna be tricky, but I need to take this one off and use this other hand to hold it. And I know you guys can't see much, but bear with me, please. Or you know what? If you guys actually want to see, I can just remove this table. I guess it doesn't work for exactly the specific thing that we're trying to do here. <laughs> that kind of works. Okay, the cauldrons are mostly empty and I'm going to put them to the side because I'll clean them and maybe we can use them for a different potion to make something cool. Now to this Fanta looking resin or maybe more like daytime cough syrup, we will add the little pellets that we crushed into a powder and also the little golden thingies, whatever those are. But just like with the powder, I'll save some of them to set a scene for something else later on. Mix, 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 mix. And this time for what I'm trying to do, I actually need the air bubbles in there, which yes, can you believe it that I'm actually saying that? Now here's the thing, I need to make this table look as if it's melting. 
And for that, I'm going to use a blowtorch, but I can't do it here because I have resin around and other things, and it's just overall not a good idea. Plus, for this thing, I need even better ventilation than what I have, so I'll have to step away for a little bit and work on this, but I'll be right back. Right, so here's what I got, and I think it looks pretty darn good for what we need to do here. Now, I do want to make the table look a little bit old, and I was thinking for that, I can use a little file and just file a thin layer off of it. And you know, everything that's a little bit high, it will give it that nice look of, you know, being used. Okay, well, that was a good idea. <laughs> this looks a lot older, which is exactly what we wanted. All right, so now it's time to write on the label and stick it to the bottle. And of course, I'm gonna once again add my little signature, GBK. These stickers are always a pain to take off. I had the same issue with uh, Dragon Blood. All right, that looks pretty good, considering we're gonna give our resin another quick mix so that everything that's settled to the bottom comes back, you know, and kind of like floats. We're gonna add a little funnel and then start pouring in until it fills up. Now we're gonna put the cork in because we don't want it to spill and it's gonna make sense in a little bit. And then we're gonna figure out exactly where we want this to stay. So we can either put it on this side or on this side over here. Yeah, this over here looks really good. So now we're gonna add a little bit of hot glue over here. So at the moment, it's a little bit too heavy on this side. Um, it's not gonna be, not for long, but I'm gonna add this until we get to the next stage. I also wanna add this silicone mat here in case there's like some small holes in there. Now the fun part begins because we're just gonna let gravity do its work. So I'm just gonna unscrew this. And now we're just gonna wait until it spreads nicely. And then we're gonna add some more and kind of like figure it out. But we first need to make sure that everything kind of like empties out and kind of like runs its course. So I do want a little bit of it to be in the bottle as it's coming out, but I can always add that later. However, it looks like it's, I mean, the indent I made, it was just enough to fill this. So I'm gonna have to probably cure it like this or maybe move it around a little bit, manipulate it and then cure it in place. Plus I want the outside of the bottle where it's clear. I don't want it to be like completely clear of resin. I want it to look as if there's been some sort of uh, accident and it's still kind of like flowing out. What's a little bit unfortunate is that most of those um, little thingies, the golden pebble thingies, literally sat at the bottom and I didn't see any of them. Even though I mixed the resin right before, it's strange, but if I had more time, I could have added them in there. However, I still think it looks pretty darn good. Nothing came through. So now let's just add a few more things to this to make it look, you know, like a nice scene. And for that, we're just gonna use some clear UV resin because I want everything to be frozen in time so that when I move them around, it's not like, you know, they're falling over or anything like that. I was just gonna stick the mortar and pestle there, but it would have been a bad idea because first we should kind of like see exactly where everything will go in case we want to move things around, you know? After we put some resin on there, we're not gonna be able to do it anymore. I think we're gonna put this in there. And yes, I'm removing this thing. I think it looks better like this. I just had a crazy idea. In order to give it that, you know, effect that it's actually corrosive and it's melting stuff, I was thinking of cutting this spoon and make it look as if part of it melted here and then, you know, the top part is kind of like floating through the whole thing. I'm gonna use this set of pliers to cut it maybe around here for now. And this part of the spoon, we'll just cut it like this. So let's hit the top part of the spoon first. All right, and then we'll put this other end kind of like here. Oh, I almost forgot about the cork. I guess we can also put that on top, making it float on top of this potion, you know? So I'm just gonna cut it like this at an angle.
Okay, so far so good. Let me just stick all these other ones in place and then I'm gonna show you the final result. All right, so after sticking those in place, what I did is I added some of those little marbles, the golden ones, and then a couple of those pieces of those balls that were, you know, powdered, but some of them didn't crush completely. And then also I added a little bit more resin to the cork to look like, you know, it was actually in there and it was wet, like the upper part of it. So then in conclusion, this is my version of the what was it armadillo bile yeah this is the golden boys version of the armadillo bile and now as usual you guys let me know in the comments what do you think about this one i think it turned out pretty good i would have loved if part of the table and the way we singed it and made it look all bubbly and you know burnt i wish that would have shown a little bit more through the resin but even so i think it looks pretty darn good let's put the other one on or at least let's try i think it's gonna be out of the frame but We'll see. Even though I could watch this all day, <laughs> enough of that. Look, even Harry Potter kind of like fell off the whole thing. So let me put this to the side. Put good old Harry Potter back here next to the potion. With that, my friends, we have reached the end of this. What was that? I was saying with that my friends we have reached the end of this episode i really do hope you enjoyed it i had a lot of fun making it and i wish i had a little bit more time to make at least one more but as you can probably imagine making these is very time consuming so for that reason and also because i'm hungry to be honest with you we're gonna stop here and we can continue in a different video with the rest of the potions that's of course if you guys enjoy these types of videos and also seeing me making them a little bit different and if you do you can let me know by liking this video and also leaving me a comment a big thank you to all of you that are subscribed to my channel and if you're not and you love these types of videos please consider subscribing and now without further ado and as i usually say you guys stay golden and keep on shining until the next video bye bye